Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be sharing my Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA update. Thank you for visiting my channel Free Your Finance. My name's Gary and I'm documenting my journey towards financial independence. I talk about investing, property and savings, so if this sounds like something you may be interested in, please hit the subscribe button below. When I started my channel, I always thought I'm going to share my wins and my losses in my journey towards financial freedom. There is absolutely no point in me sitting here saying I'm perfect, I never make any mistakes. Trust me, I do. Hopefully, me sharing this with you will help both you and me learn together and make better decisions going forward. I've now made the decision that I'm going to start sharing a quarterly update of how my Stocks and Shares ISA with Vanguard is performing. Today is the 27th of June 2020, so I know I'm ever so slightly early, but we are basically at the end of quarter 2 2020. Unfortunately, there's no Q1 update as this channel wasn't even dreamt of back then. For any of you that have watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm really into Vanguard low cost index funds and they're now a big part of my investing journey. After my five buy to let properties, my stocks and shares ISA is my second largest holding in my portfolio. I invest every single month automatically no matter what the market is doing. This is commonly known as dollar cost averaging. In very quick terms, it helps you average out your investments over the year in multiple payments in case of a market crash. I'm not going to share my exact financial figures. Instead, I'm going to share the performance percentages over my investing lifetime so far. So for some of you that may already own a Vanguard ISA, you may well recognise this page. You can see that I started my ISA on the 2nd of September 2019 and as of today's date, 27th of June 2020, I have a rate of return of 10.17%. I am absolutely chuffed with this return, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. My portfolio took a huge hit back towards the end of March when markets reached their lows in the most recent crash. However, over the last couple of months, it has slowly started increasing again and the markets are almost reaching previous levels. Regardless to this, I'm going to continue putting in my payments on the same day every single month. Even if the market is 50% down, 50% off in my eyes. A phrase often used with index fund investing is time in the market is more important than time in the market. My portfolio return has varied massively over the last few months, with it being down as low as minus 10% and with it reaching as much as over 16% up at one point. Before I go any further, I must make the comment that I'm not a financial advisor. These are simply the funds that I choose to pick. They suit my risk to reward ratio and ultimately you need to pick funds that suit you. So my first holding in my ISA is a small amount of cash. As I said earlier in the video, I'm investing monthly into the funds that I've chosen. The funds change price each month and sometimes I'm left with a very small surplus which then sits in my ISA as cash. When I have enough cash to purchase another unit of a fund, I then simply invest it into my chosen fund. You'll see that it says I have a return of 1.5% on the cash in my ISA as Vanguard do pay out a very small amount for any cash holdings. My next fund is the Emerging Markets Stock Index Fund. Now this is a bit of a lottery fund for me, a bit of fun. I only have about 2% of my ISA balance in this fund. This fund is made up of companies in emerging countries such as China, Taiwan, Korea and India. Emerging markets are seen as very risky, which is why I choose to not hold a lot of money in this fund. However, just with all investing, with higher risk can come higher reward. I've decided to put a small amount of my portfolio solely in emerging markets, just in case they were to have great increases over the next 10 years or so. My personal belief is that many of these emerging countries really have amazing potential of growth. The proof, however, of emerging markets being very volatile is the fact that this fund has mostly been at a loss since I've owned it well before the recent crash and this has only just turned into the green and has now provided me a return of 0.46%. The next fund I own is the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield ETF. The ticker symbol is VHYL. I have about 10% of my portfolio in this fund and currently it's made me a loss of minus 13.94%, the largest drop in my portfolio. This fund, before the recent drops, had provided me a small amount of growth. However, with the recent large drop, it hasn't yet recovered as you can see by its returns. All purchases I made of this fund were before the drops back in March, hence its big losses right
right now. The stocks within the fund are not really companies with large growth potential. Instead, it holds mostly very well established companies such as Nestle and Coca-Cola that in the long term have always provided high dividends to their investors, hence the name of the fund. This fund provides me a similar dividend income to the funds that make up over 80% of the rest of my portfolio. The dividend yield of this fund is currently 4.09%. My next fund is the S&P 500 ETF. Its ticker symbol is VUSA. I have about 33% of my portfolio in this fund. This was the first fund that I treated as my main fund, which I was going to regularly invest into. I loved the fact that although it was a US-based index fund, many of these companies were actually worldwide names such as Amazon, Facebook, Google and Microsoft. It held amazing companies that work around the world, although being based in America. As I've already said, I was treating this as my main fund that I was going to be investing into monthly until about four months ago. I was going to carry on into the foreseeable future. However, I've recently changed my mind and moved to the next fund that we're gonna speak about. Before moving on to that, you can see that my S&P 500 fund is currently up 1.76%. I must know that I stopped investing in this fund before the recent large drop in the market. So the fact that it is up is quite remarkable and it shows the bounce back the market has had since its lows on the 23rd of March. The next fund I own is the FTSE All World ETF, ticker symbol VWRL. This has now taken place as my main index fund and has around 50% of my portfolio in it. This is going to be the fund that I will now be investing in monthly for the foreseeable future. The reason I chose to move to this fund instead of the S&P 500 fund is the fact that this is a global fund covering all over the world, including a small amount in emerging markets. Whereas the S&P 500 is made up of 508 companies, VWRL gives me a wider diversification by investing in almost 3,500 companies all over the globe. It has got slightly higher fees of 0.22% compared to the S&P fund, which is just 0.07%, one of the lowest on Vanguard's platforms. However, as with every part of my portfolio, diversification is the most important thing for me, and I just felt like this fund suited my needs better. As I said earlier, this is the great thing about me sharing my journey with you. I make mistakes, I change my mind. This is part of any journey towards financial independence. The fund is currently 20.62% up. This large increase has mostly been introduced by me dollar cost averaging. If I put the whole amount into the fund before the recent crash, my funds would not have been so high. Instead, I have kept investing monthly and it just so happens that one of my monthly payments actually fell on the 23rd of March 2020, the lowest the market hit in the most recent crash. Since then, the amount I invested on that one date alone has returned me almost 25% in just three months. Of course, this was a massive touch of luck. However, I was also investing at those lower values whilst the market was recovering recently, ultimately improving my returns. Many will argue the S&P 500 is also a great fund to invest in. They will say with the same monthly investments, it could have made very similar results. And I cannot argue one bit. However, again, this is a decision you will need to make what suits you the best. My plan is to eventually start introducing bonds in about 10 years time when I'm closer to my 40th birthday. That sounds very scary. Finally, I have a very small amount in the FTSE developed world, ticker symbol VEVE. -E. This fund is currently 1.08% down. I only have a very small amount of money in this fund as this was one of the global funds I invested in in my early days of opening this ISA. I've recently decided VWRL suited me better so I actually transferred most of the holdings in VEVE -E last week to a different fund. The amount you can see is the remaining balance that was the change so to speak that couldn't buy an additional unit of the fund I moved it to. I will probably eventually sell this small amount, maybe when markets go up. So there you go, they are my holdings right now as of the 27th of June, 2020. I will be sharing my quarter free update at the end of September. So make sure you don't forget to hit subscribe if you wish to see how my portfolio has performed over the next three months. I will not be surprised if I'm reporting some quite big drops, as I believe we have a really tough year ahead of us in the stock market. It's going to be really interesting sharing these quarterly updates 
updates with you and seeing how the funds that I've picked perform. Do please leave your comments with your thoughts below. Maybe let me know what funds you choose to invest in. Even give me your opinion on what funds I've chosen to invest in. I love hearing other people's opinions. That's the great thing about financial freedom. We all take such different routes towards the same end goal. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please hit the like button if you found it helpful. You don't understand how much it helps a small channel like mine. I regularly share videos about investing, property and savings. Hopefully I'll see you very soon. Take care.